In this video, we head to Intrepid Cameras to see how their 4x5 camera is made. They got a whole bunch of other goodies as well. Let's jump in. YouTube, what's good? Welcome back to the channel. As you saw by the trailer, I got the chance to go visit Intrepid Cameras in the UK. I don't live in the UK anymore, but one of my last things to do was to go down to Brighton and go holla at them. It was pretty fun. I got to see a lot of cool stuff and it's definitely a company you need to check out. Let's jump into the video. All right, so tell me, who are you? So I'm Naomi, um, I'm head of all things marketing, branding and like the digital and creative side of Intrepid. Nice, and where are we? So <laughs> this is Intrepid, um, so we're based in Hove which is uh, like just next to Brighton. Yeah. Um, and as you probably know we make large format cameras and enlargers and loads of other accessories for those products. So the workshop at Intrepid was pretty cool. This wasn't a giant factory with all this crazy kind of automation and all this stuff. This really felt like a workshop with artisans, people using their hands to create things. Cool, so this is the Mark IV 4x5, which is like our most popular model. Um, the 4x5 was like the first camera that we ever made. But this is the fourth generation, so I'll just set one up. I'm sure loads of people that follow you have probably seen I've actually many never seen one of these myself. Ah, okay. <laughs> I don't shoot much 4x5. So. But yeah, that's fair enough. So this comes in um, red bellows, black bellows, uh, and blue and green as well. So this is the 4x5. It's a super lightweight, which is obviously one of our selling points. That basically collapses pretty small. You can yeah, yeah, it goes completely it. flat, so you can put it in a bag. Um, gotcha. A lot of people use them for like, backpacking, a lot of landscape yeah, photographers, yeah. especially in America as well. Um, yeah, that's awesome. the finished so camera. So today we're going to learn how basically everything that's yeah. there is made. Yeah, so we we make uh, four by five cameras, five by seven and eight by ten. Um, they all have very similar features, so we'll walk through the process and mm -hmm. there'll be parts being made for all the different cameras. And then obviously we also make enlargers. Um, not all the production is done in-house, some is done sort of like with other suppliers, but we'll show you the assembly process. So in this particular area is where all of the camera magic begins. <laughs> I'm Will, uh, I'm head of manufacture here at Intrepid Camera. I'm in charge of taking things like the 3D design files and the 2D files and translating them into something that we can machine on our 4x4 foot CNC router. So how do we go from something that, like, max design to something you actually So Max, Max already has a load of experience, obviously, with designing cameras, so he'll design everything in, in CAD on the computer first, yeah. but then he'll hand those files over to me, and uh, my job is to make the most efficient method of manufacture, I suppose. <laughs> so I'll take those designs, figure out the thickness of plywood that it needs to be machined on, figure out the depths of cart, and then once I've done a first few prototypes, I'll figure out, well, how can I make that more efficient and how can I get that uh, running on a day-to-day -day basis? So that's what's running at the moment. So right now, how many, kind of, how many cameras is that working on? How many of those? So right now, this is the rotating back of the 4x5 camera, and I can get 36 out of a sheet. Uh, depending on the part, I can get up to 112 parts on one sheet, but it, it depends on how big the part is. Gotcha. How long does that take to make those 36? Uh, these 36 will probably take about 40 minutes to an hour. Okay. Uh, there's quite a lot of material to hog out. Some files can take up to two to three hours, depending on how complicated they are. Sometimes they need to be flipped over and they'll have a lot of very fine features. So pretty much everything that's made that comes out of this facility starts there at some point? Yeah, this machine is the heart and soul of Intrepid. Uh, everything, that, everything that goes on the cameras, this machine is where it starts. A quick word from today's video sponsor, Aura. In 2020, 49 million Americans were victims of identity theft and it ended up costing them about $56 billion. This isn't just happening to people who fall for phishing scams or use bad passwords. 37 million records got hacked in 2020 alone from major social media sites, national grocery store chains, cryptocurrency exchanges, pharmacies, phone and internet providers. That means that unless you want to give up on the internet, preventing your personal information from leaking could be completely out of your control. That is why I'm excited to partner with Aura who is sponsoring today's video. Aura's app uses AI and machine learning to protect your identity online. You tell Aura what email addresses, account numbers, and phone numbers you want monitored, and their algorithms scour the dark web, data brokers, and public records, and will alert you to any criminal activity fast. Aura's app also features a VPN that encrypts your browsing history and allows you to stay anonymous online. And their antivirus software will block malware and viruses before they infect your devices. Someone becomes a victim of identity fraud every 14 seconds. Don't be the next one. Let Aura do the hard work for you. 
Aros already helped me out a bit finding my information on the dark web, such as my phone number. Have you had this problem? Definitely comment below and let people know how crazy things can get on the internet. Try Aros for free for two weeks to see if your personal identifiable information has been leaked on the dark web. Use the website aura.com slash ribsy to go. Now back to our video. Yeah, this is where everything starts out really. Um, obviously, most of our cameras have a lot of wooden components, um, but we make them all here. We've got Matt over here, who's currently doing some sanding. Um, and then everything is uh, varnished, and then it's hung up to dry. Um, and then once it's dry, the parts can then go on and be assembled. So this funny looking machine is a glass grinder. Um, so under, under these slabs, there's sheets of glass. So it's, it's grinding the ground glass. Um, and then once it's done, come up here, and then we laser on the grid for focusing. These little components here are part of the tilt shift mechanism on the, the front standards. And we process these by hand. They fit inside this jig here and we have thousands of them to do. So this process here cuts a thread in. And later on these will have a specially designed bolt which screws and glues in place and that forms part of the tilt shift mechanism. Intrepid Cameras relies a lot on 3D printed parts for its cameras. It's pretty cool how they've been able to blend wood and really nice finishes like that with more modern things like 3D printing. All right, uh, this is part of our 3D printing farm, which we've got some more out here as well. So many components of the enlargers and of the cameras are 3D printed. Uh, what we've got going on up here are some of the ground glass holders. So these take a couple of hours and then the, the glass that Matt grinds fits in here and then they're all assembled with the rest of the camera. So just like the, the wooden machine we saw over there, it just seems like every single camera is originating somewhere in one of these machines. Yeah, pretty much. There's very few components that we manufacture externally. Gotcha. Almost everything is done in-house. Even a lot of the metalwork processing, we have it laser cut and anodized elsewhere, yeah. but it will still come in, we'll thread it, we'll finish it by hand, and then before we reassemble it. Gotcha. And so how much time does it take on, for one of these machines for one camera, let's say, across? all the components? I know that might be a tough question. But. For, what, for one 4x5 inch camera, all the 3D printed components for that, it's probably a combined total of, well, for a wooden one, maybe six to eight hours of printing. Yeah. For a full black edition 3D printed camera, it's more like 20 hours of 3D printing, wow. maybe more, but we spread them across different machines yeah, yeah. so that we're maximizing our efficiency. Wow. When we finish, we'll just load up the next program yeah. and we'll leave it. They're so reliable. Nice. So once we've got the programs figured out, they, we set them up with an SD card, program them up, make sure they've got enough filament, leave them running. And then yeah. all throughout the day, we'll be taking parts off, setting up for a new set, and then we all communicate with each other to make sure that we've got enough stock of whatever parts. Yeah, yeah. So maybe someone in assembly will say, I need more of, ground glass holders or I need more lens board holders and then one of us will set it up. These are super accessible machines. Yeah. I think that's one of the reasons that we have them. They are uh, Prusa printers from the Czech Republic. They originated where uh, a guy was like he wanted to build his own 3D printer. Mm -hmm. So on these machines all the orange components are printed on yeah, other printers gotcha. and uh, a lot of these we assemble ourselves they come as a kit. Yeah. But because of that, they're super versatile. Every time something goes wrong, uh, it means I can just jump on it, I can fix it, I can change yeah, yeah. the sensors, I can get it, get it running again. Cool. Um, they, yeah, they're really accessible. And I think a lot of the design choices on this have informed how we built our cameras. So that it's quite an interesting relationship. I'm still amazed at how much they can get done with 3D printing. These machines are just on all day long and can produce so much good stuff. Obviously you've seen where all the parts start life um, and where everything's made. Um, so once we've got the 3D printed parts, the wooden parts and the metal parts, it all comes in here and that's where um, these guys are assembling the cameras essentially. I mean providing we have all the components, um, it would be, we could probably make a camera up in about sort of one to two hours. Mm -hmm. but because of the sheer volume of orders we get for cameras, we don't really build in that way, so we build sure. in big batches. So in this room, everything is made in batches. Yeah. Um, so you'll have like the rear standards made up separately, the front standards, the bases, the bellows obviously um, are hand folded. And mm -hmm. then at the end of the production line, all of those parts are put together and then 
then we get final camera. Um, but yeah, rather than making sort of like one camera at a time, we'd be doing big batches. Mm -hmm. So then there'd be like, say, 20 cameras going onto the shelf in one go, and then gotcha. they'd all be shipped out. Eliza here is on Bellows Assembly. Um, this is obviously crucial for all the cameras. So we hand fold all the bellows in house. Yeah, so these bellows are for one of the compact enlargers, mm -hmm. but obviously we've got um, bellows for all the cameras as well, so up to eight by 10, which are significantly larger. So the pretty cool thing about Intrepid is the blend of electronics and analog. The enlarger is the perfect example of this. Um, so this is Dan. He Hi. is, <laughs> right now he's working on the timers, um, so he, for the enlargers that is. Mm -hmm. So he's doing some of the programming um, and then he assembles them all here. Um, I think you probably do pretty much every single timer. Almost you send out, yeah. Ones, yeah. yeah. Wow, so okay. the, t the timer is like the core part of the enlarger. It, it controls everything. So it controls like color balance, mm -hmm. um, filters for black and white, and all the scanning modes. And then we obviously program that all in-house. This is the um, compact enlarger. So you've obviously seen the timers mm -hmm. and the um, actual body of the enlarger being made. Um, so that will be the finished product. Obviously we did the Kickstarter last year. Um, this is the current version, which is much the same as the Kickstarter one. Um, and it's, because it's because we program it all ourselves, um, it's got like a USB port, so like when we do bring out future upgrades, mm -hmm. you won't need to buy a new kit. We can, you can just upgrade your current kit, gotcha. which is really cool. The main function of this is as an enlarger, so you can use it to print from uh, 35 mm 120, mm -hmm. and it's black and white as well as color. Um, but the other function, which a lot of people use it for, which is really cool, is you can scan your negatives with it. So you can use the light source, um, it detaches, and then that's, you can use it as a light source to do DSLR scanning. So you just pop it off like that. And then you don't need that part. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is the light source, so it goes up to six by nine. So then you've got the negative carriers here, um, which neatly slot on there and then you would obviously if you had it set up properly you'd have a copy stand mm -hmm. or a tripod you'd have your DSLR mounted above it um, and then you'd put your negatives in here put that there. and then on the timer there's a scan mode so we've got a black and white mode color one and a scanning one okay. um, and that's that's basically it um, a lot of people do DSLR scanning these days. Mm -hmm. It's like obviously a lot quicker than... So Intrepid's been around for a minute and they've got a couple varieties of their 4x5 camera. So here we're going to learn a bit more about that. This is basically um, a selection of different, uh, all the different generations of the 4x5. Um, so this is the first ever 4x5 camera. This was actually um, Max's uni project, I believe. Interesting. Um, so that's, that's how it started life. So Intrepid started about eight years ago, and then mm -hmm. this was the first camera, and then we did a Kickstarter for the 4x5. Um, and that, yeah, the very first generation that went out on the Kickstarter was much, much like these ones. And then what are we at now? How many iterations of this have there been? So we're now on the fourth one, um, and we have, we've been on the Mark IV for a couple of years now, um, but it's yeah, the design is really refined. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see, I'll get this one down, you can see the, uh, the difference. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and even like the bellows, like, we've just refined it loads and the production process is obviously quite a lot more high tech. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and you'll see like the introduction of aluminium parts and 3D printed parts just makes it really, really stable. Yeah, yeah. It started as just a four by five, but um, we now have obviously five by seven and eight by 10. And although they're different sizes, all the components are like the same really. Yeah. So once the cameras are completely assembled, they come in here, which is our stock room and shipping room. Sidi is head of shipping and does a lot of the communications. Mm -hmm. um, so she might have emailed you before if you've ever ordered something. Um, but yeah, everything is shipped out of this room. Um, we ship worldwide, so we don't really use many supplies, we, um, as in like distributors, we yeah. just ship everything. Um, and yeah, people order the cameras all over the world, which is always amazing. Like we've sent cameras to like China and South America and pretty much everywhere. Um, so we've got quite good stock at the moment. 
These are all 4x5s, got a couple of 8x10s there. The and size these, difference is pretty dramatic. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. These will all be going out in the next week or so. Gotcha. Yeah, so there's a, a size comparison between 4x5 and 8x10. <laughs> so they they look kind of the same, yeah, but yeah. obviously the 8x10 is massive. Is one basically just a scaled up version of the other, or are there some kind real differences? Of. There are some real differences. Um, so the, it looks, it, yeah, it looks similar and like things like the base is essentially just a scaled up version. Same yeah. with the bellows, they're hand folded exactly the same, weren't mm. made exactly the same way. Um, but the main difference is you'll see we've got these struts here, which is just kind of a support because gotcha. it's so much bigger. Yeah, yeah. It just needs that. And then the backs are really different. Um, <laughs> so the that's got a Fresnel on actually as well. We do do an 8x10 Fresnel. The, with the 4x5, um, it's got a graph lock back, which is uh, yeah. very common on 4x5 cameras and it means you can use a variety of different film backs, like mm -hmm. what different 120 backs, instant film backs, um, etc. And obviously our enlarger. Um, and then, so yeah, for the, the graph look back to work, you need to be able to remove the ground glass. Yep. So that's a key feature of the 4x5. Don't need that on the 8x10. Um, I'm just going to set this up so it's a bit easier to show. So the, <laughs> it's so big, isn't it? Um, yeah, so it's quite a different system on the back. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just because of the, the sheer size of it. It needs these clips need to be so much bigger to be yeah. able to hold. When you've got a film holder, to be able to like have enough tension gotcha. to hold it in place. Um, but you can to change to landscape. The back just pops off. It's held by magnets, and then you just rotate it like that gotcha. and pop it back on. So if making cameras wasn't enough, they've invested a whole bunch of time recently into building a new studio. This studio will serve as a hub <laughs> for the local community. So this is our latest project, a new space, which is uh, next door to the workshop room. Um, it's called Intrepid Studios. Basic concept is sort of a co-working space for analog photographers. So we've got uh, sort of a studio set up with coloramas, backdrops, all the lighting you could need. We've got some flash stuff coming soon as well. And then we also have uh, four darkroom booths, which are over there with DeVere 504 enlargers, which are really nice, yeah. We've got two set up with our LED heads, mm -hmm. and then two set up with the traditional DeVere heads. So you've got some options there, which has been quite fun to sort of adapt them to our LED tech, which yeah. has been really exciting. And then we've got two Calenta print processors, one for black and white, and one for RA4. So loads of the space can actually be in light rather than it sort of ah, being like gotcha. a traditional dark room. So we've got the booths and then you just bring your paper through in like a light proof bag yeah. and then take it into the uh, print processor room. So in the rest of this whole space here you can see it can be in daylight and people can do you know, photography stuff. We'll also have a scanning station with Epson scanners and 35mm scanners so you can and a nice Mac as well so you can scan your negatives. So basically everything you'd want at like your own little home setup but yeah. wouldn't really be able to afford so you can come use this space for a day or however long you want. We're looking into sort of membership ideas, things like that. Mm -hmm. And also just having it as sort of a creative space for artists to put on shows, do talks, loads of um, classes like how to use the darkroom, how to print colour, black and white mm -hmm. for the first time and to like get people back up to scratch who've done it before. So it's going to be quite sort of a flexible space. Really excited about what we could do here. And it's yeah. a nice extension since we got into sort of doing a larger stuff. Everyone on the team got really into printing as well. And so it just kind of feels like a natural extension to what we've, um, what we've been doing over in the workshop. So before we end the video, I want to talk to Max. I asked him a few questions about his journey, and that way we can find out exactly how he got to where he is now with Intrepid Cameras. My name is Max, um, founder of Intrepid Camera. Started back in 2014 in a little garage, not too far from here. We've expanded a little bit since then. Um, yeah, day to day, mostly still doing the design work, coming up with new products. Although a lot recently I've been doing a lot of building work in the new studio, which I think will be in this video. Mostly getting covered in dust and painting, but I don't mind that. <laughs> cool. So how did you begin making cameras? What was kind of the beginning of this all? So it started as a dissertation project back in 2014 at university. Uh, the general concept was to come up with a open source large format camera. I got really into large format printing and large format photography yeah. and uh, didn't have like a massive amount of access to new affordable cameras, there was a lot of second hand stuff which needed a lot of work, 
yeah. or that was really, really expensive new stuff. So I started building my own. When my dissertation finished, a few people had said, oh, like, you know, it's quite a cool project. Have you thought about sharing it with anyone? So I sort of started a bit of a blog, mm -hmm. sharing the idea with people. And then before I knew it, we were doing a Kickstarter. <laughs> and um, I was committed to making hundreds of them for people all over the world. Um, so yeah, I rented a little garage, started doing that. It was quite slow at the beginning. Sure. Didn't really know what I was doing, like bought some machinery that I thought would be probably the right thing to build them. So I started doing that and then, um, but luckily things went all right after the first year and James joined the team who's now the head of manufacturing. And um, yeah, things all started to snowball, a few more Kickstarters, a few more team members, bigger workshop. And then yeah, now we find ourselves here with quite a big product line. I think there's 11 of us in today. And yeah, it's been quite, quite a journey. <laughs> Um, how does it feel to be like a company that's making new things for analog photography? It feels pretty good. <laughs> everything is old, but here yeah. obviously everything is new brand new. It's cool because obviously like, and as you know, like the analog community is like, it's quite a vocal community. It's loads of like really bright people with loads of amazing ideas. So for that, to be able to be sort of part of that creative process of people feeding in ideas, developing new products, where it's not just it's not just individuals modifying old stuff, getting old stuff working. To be able to like create things that are more relevant for the 21st century is an incredibly sort of rewarding thing yeah. to be able to do. So yeah, love it. Awesome. And what's kind of in store for the future? The near term, long term? Yeah, it's a good industry? question. So the thing mostly working on at the minute is sort of internal, a bit more boring. It's like internal like efficiencies, getting getting things running like clockwork, which we're getting um, getting pretty good at, particularly for the cameras, particularly the 4x5 camera. We've got a few changes to the camera lineup coming, and there'll be more about that in the next few months. Uh, in terms of the enlarger side of the business, that's grown really quickly, which has been fantastic. So we've got the new studio space, which we've been setting up, which will be partly to test our new products, but also partly to sort of share why we love the darkroom with everyone around the local area, and hopefully get a few people down from London. Um, in terms of the enlarger product line, we're very close to being done on the 8x10 enlarger attachment as well as a 5x7 one. Those would be ones that slide into the back of the cameras that would be about as thick as a film holder, so it would be pretty universal and allow you to make prints using your cameras like the 4x5 one does, as well as using them to uh, scan in your negatives as well. Yeah. So that's what's um, coming up. They're the big projects. We've got a few other little bits and bobs that will be sort of announced along the way, but yeah, they're the big projects that we're working on at the minute. Cool. Oh, and we're having a complete rebrand. Oh, really? <laughs> so, we've got a new website, new logo, all very exciting, so keep your eyes up for that. Very cool. And last but not least, any advice for 4x5 or even the, the, the really wild 8x10 shooters? Uh, any advice? Uh, make a checklist and slow down. And if you don't take any pictures, at least you had a nice day out. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed that video. That was definitely a lot of fun to make, and I'm glad that I could squeeze that one in before I left. Please help me out. If you enjoyed the video, like it down below, and of course, drop me a comment and ask any questions you might have. I might get them answered and then follow up in the next video. All right, y'all. To the next one. I'm out.